Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about the flight controllers and how sometimes if you short something out, it will not power on with USB like this. There's no flashing light. There's no indication that it's getting power. Um, but when you plug in a battery and supply it to the uh, VBAT on the flight controller, it might turn on, which is super weird. But then even when you have a power supply to the VBAT and then plug it in through your USB to the computer, it still won't communicate. So I started uh, poking around because I was trying to get this three inch together and um, I was a goofball and accidentally shorted the five volt and the ground lines going to the VTX. It was a mess. Anyways, um, so I'm working on figuring out how to get the flight controller back up and running. And of course, after some Google searching, I found a Project Blue Falcon video where JC just absolutely explains how to do everything. It's crazy. Hey guys, JC so, here. I'll go ahead and stop that, but uh, you can find this video online very easily just by searching for Project Blue Falcon, and then it's uh, fix, uh, fix for no USB uh, power on flight controller. Um, and then also, let's go up here. These, this is a closer image because what I'm gonna be showing you is the power diode, and I imagine that it's not going to be very clear. So this is what they look like zoomed in really close. Um, it says S4 on it, and it has these three parallel lines on one side. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. That's the power diode. So here I've got a closer up. Hopefully you'll be able to see this if it focuses, maybe. Okay. And then I'll turn this guy on. And basically what JC said was it's usually that happens or that's characteristic of a diode being blown out. And um, he explained how to figure that out or how to uh, troubleshoot and identify which diode is messed up. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this flight controller. And this is the actual one that I blew earlier and I fixed it, but I will show you how to check and see uh, which component you need to replace. So right here, you can see the voltage right now. There's no, I'm not touching anything. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to ground on the USB. And then what you need to look for is something has it, have y'all spotted the diode yet? If you haven't, it's just right there, and that's what it looks like. And what you're going to need to do is touch either side of it and look to see if there's 5 volts. Now on this one, this is the good one, so it's behaving properly, and there is 5 volts on both sides. So if I go here, you see in the multimeter in the top left or right-hand corner, it says 4.71. That's basically 5 volts. And if I touch down here on the other side of the diode, we're getting 5.14. Okay, so this is a properly working diode. On the one that was burned out, this side was getting 5 volts, and this side was not. It was getting like, I think, 440 millivolts or something. Basically no volts at all. So I knew that was the culprit. So once we pinpointed what component needed to be replaced, then you have to deal with, okay, how do I get that tiny little service mount component off the flight controller? And that's what I'm gonna show you. Uh, I was surprised how easy that went. Now, I've never done this before, and it was just kind of a, I, I winged it. So I think this is another one. And usually if you're dealing with these drones and stuff, you'll have like an entire like stack of flight controllers that for one reason or another are broken or don't work. So this is one that I pulled out of the stack. And let's see, I think there's a, they should all have at least one of these diodes on it. Where'd it go? Let's see here. Okay, I found it. This one has a diode right there. So you can see, um, but probably not very well. That's why I showed you a picture earlier of what it looks like zoomed in. Uh, it has S4 and has the three lines on it. And um, we're going to go ahead and add some flux to that and then get use our favorite tool, the hot air. See, he had a sweet hot air rework station. I'm just going to use a hot air gun, like an industrial, what I was using for vacuum form stuff. So I'm just going to add a little bit of flux there. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to that side of it. And then we're going to hit it with some hot air. And... The trick, I think, to it is hitting it with hot air. And uh, one thing that JC mentioned that I think is a really good point is that when you're blowing air at it, don't blow air like directly at the chip or like into the chip that way. You want to find a, find a way where the air hits the least amount of the chip possible while, while, while heating up that one little circuit. So I'm going to move the camera down a little bit, and then I'm just going to fire up the hot air gun, and we're just going to try to do this on camera. It might not work well at all, and we'll give it a shot. But I just, I mean, I just did it and it worked. So regardless of if this works in live stream or not, this is a pretty awesome process that you can definitely do on your own. Okay, so this is the, you know, Harbor Freight heat gun. 
I'm gonna fire this thing up and we're gonna heat the board up and then we'll watch it bubble and then we'll pull it off. I'm using I'm using uh, ceramic tweezers so they don't conduct um, heat. Um, these work really well. So here we go. Okay, so that came off. Um, now, one thing that did happen to me just now is that if you notice, it blew the little diode like clear across the table. So when you're doing this and you're putting air on it, uh, be careful that because this is it. This is a tiny little like smaller than a grain of uh, uh, not sand, uh, grain of rice, and it just like poof, blew across the board. So, but then we take this, and then we basically prepare the board. Um, and essentially we would pretend like this is, you know, the board that needs to be repaired. We would take the diode off that one, uh, making a uh, very uh, careful, uh, before we take it off, we need to make sure that, uh, see how there's like the three lines. Well, you can't see cause it's not, it's so small, but um, on the picture that I showed earlier, there's three lines on one side and the other side doesn't have any lines. You wanna make sure that you keep orientation the same on the chip that you put it onto. So we pulled it off this board and then let's pretend that we're putting it on this one we would do the same process, pull the bad diode off, and then we would take this guy, very carefully place it on the board with the correct orientation. Oh man, this is very difficult with the camera. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna struggle with this because of the live stream. I don't, I can't edit this out, but anyways, you would struggle to get it to place just right, and then you'd get a little bit more flux, put it on the two ends, and then um, I agree with JC. He said that it's much easier to just take your soldering iron and then come in here and just like kind of touch the pads and, and make one connection. And once the you have one side of the diode soldered in, it's really easy to flip it over and then solder the other side. And that's what I did, and it worked out really well. Um, as you can see, I'll show you. This is the one that I did the repair to. And that diode right there, it looks perfectly fine. And if I plug it in through USB, you can see that it works. So yeah, if you find yourself with a flight controller that will power on through VBAT, uh, through, uh, when you plug in your LiPo battery, but not USB, then you might be able to you know, scavenge a diode off an old flight controller that's broken and uh, throw it on and keep this, uh, keep your flight controller working. So I'm gonna be able to keep using this one and throw it back on the three inch and keep rolling. So yeah, just a little tip. And again, thanks to JC. Uh, he made awesome videos. Uh, he has an awesome legacy and uh, just props to him. And uh, if you haven't seen his channel, check it out. He's got some good stuff. All right, thanks guys. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. Um, nope, <laughs> no, no questions. Christian, I see your, your question, but I'm not reading it out loud. All right guys, I will see you next time.